It's from six hours ago. educational in the 90s for the very first time we demonstrated using a new technique that there are planet orbiting other stars we found a planet orbiting a star called 51 Pegasi that planet was about the mass of Jupiter similar to our own planet Jupiter but had a very short orbit was essentially very close to the star and then extremely hot this is what we call the hot Jupiter. And that was the beginning of a long series of discoveries and uh, what we call right now the exoplanet revolution. They're going to teach My us about space Kolo. today. I'm professor of physics at Cambridge University and ETH Zurich. My main activity is to study planets orbiting other stars, try to understand how they look like, and eventually trying to find out whether there may be some planet with life as well. Mm -hmm. Science is everywhere in the society. We should no take doubt. any opportunity to bring science into life of everybody. It's astronomy class. When you have people interested by video games, if there is a little bit of a chance that through these video games, through this exercise of the gaming, and then I can sneak in and with a couple of minutes of interaction uh, through the video games, I can maybe suggest some idea which is scientifically relevant, bring a little bit more knowledge into the society. Star Rail is gonna make me smarter. Star Rail, there's, man, Hoyaverse is going to put science and technology into the game so that people will learn. That's, they're going to trick me into learning about stuff by connecting it to simping. Something which is great when you deal with what's called planetary science is you can essentially expect everything. I feel my IQ tingling. We have learned in the past 30 years that the diversity of the planet are way more uh, and way larger than the one we experience on the solar system. And assuming that there are so many planets and so many stars in the universe, it's very likely that there exists plenty of planets like they created for the game. With Fox Girls? Jarrell 6 is the first planet you meet in Onkai Star Rail covered. He said it's he said that it's likely that there's planets just like the ones you've seen in the game. So it's real. It is real. Jarrell 6 is the first planet you meet in Onkai Star Rail covered by harsh Fox hurricanes. Fox girls and are snow. out there. The planet has been covered by snow for hundreds of years. Snow almost killed the civilization there. And people on the planet somehow managed to maintain only one city with the help of a special energy. When you talk about a planet that is frosted, and we know that in the past of the Earth, we may have encountered this very special situation where the Earth was like a snowball. Mm -hmm. It means the eons are real. When you're dealing yeah. with a frozen planet, there's a lot of possibilities. First, you have to realize that the gas, um, if you cool it down enough, like uh, carbon dioxide, will become icy and frost. So it's easy to consider a planet that will be uh, seen as a gaseous planet. I mean, cooling down enough and looking very, very icy. Now, it depends also on the amount of water you have on the planet and whether you have a big oceans and whether you want to create 
a kind of an ice crust uh, from this water. Or you don't have water at all, but you build up this kind of icy structure for all the tiny gas that um, is transforming a solid because it's very cold. It's okay if there's a planet out there that's very cold. I think what we should be focusing on is, is there a planet out there that has a stellar on in it? Like, okay, is there, is there a way that a planet could have a fucking seed of destruction in it? Maybe that's the thing we should look at. So what matter here is uh, the temperature. You have to cool down the temperature, so you should not get that too close to the star. If you're too close to the star, it doesn't work. But you also have to be careful about the structure of the atmosphere of the planet. I take an example like Venus. Venus is full of carbon dioxide, and that warms the planet. It's a greenhouse effect. Venus sucks. Well, if you remove this, and you can bring gas that is cooling the planet as well. And that happened on Earth, and uh, the Earth had way more uh, carbon dioxide in the past because of the rise of life and a lot of production of oxygen. That was one of the big effects called the Great Oxygenation Event. The whole atmosphere of Earth has been transformed, and at that time, the temperature equilibrium was dramatically changed, and the Earth became what we call a snowball. So it was exactly the kind of icy planet you will encounter in the game, and I was a result of a dramatic change of the nature of the atmosphere. Wait a minute, someone wished for the eternal freeze on Earth? Who the fuck would do that? What? I bet they wish for the eternal freeze because when the aliens came. So here's what happened, right? So the first of all, first of all, the aliens came and they seated them, themselves. They, they seated with the um, dumb humans at the time to make the uh, us slightly less dumb human. And then um, they kind of noped out, right? And then one day, one of these humans wished. Well, there's probably other aliens that came after that, right? The Greys probably came, started experimenting on them. And so one of them said, Hey, I wish for the eternal freeze so that the Greys will stop experimenting on us. And then they. That's what happened. But that's, wouldn't there have been a better way? What we needed, what we needed was clip off. We need to pray to, to Titan. I think that's what he's saying. I'm pretty sure that's what he's saying. Atmosphere of that planet. So you see there's so much possibilities you can play with. It depends really on the chemistry of the planet, on the structure of the planet, and of course, of the amount of energy which is radiating on the planet by the star. Mm -hmm. So what has happened in the last 30 years is we have been exposed to a diversity of planetary system that no one would have imagined. When you have a rocky planet, depending where the planet is sitting on the, its orbit, you have a different scenario on the surface of the planet. Take the Earth, bring it closer to the Sun, you're going to end up with one face of the Earth extremely hot so hot that you would melt the continent. Well, don't so do you that. You end up with what we call a lava planet. No, oh my God, don't case, do that. You can imagine you take no. the Earth and you make it much bigger. Keep the Earth where it is. We don't need one side of it to be that hot. Don't do it. We got summer coming. Much bigger than the Earth. Not one Earth mass, maybe five, ten times the, the mass of the Earth. And you have a lot of carbon as well. So you have all this carbon no. on the planet. No, and don't And then do you have this uh, higher mass. Higher mass means pressure. The more mass you have, more pressure you have on the planet. When you combine the carbon and the pressure, you create diamond. It's exactly how you create diamond on Earth. So this kind of a very massive uh, planet, you could imagine this should be full of diamond. Are you saying this big diamond would be all yours? And I guess you'd need it to be spinning in orbit, right? So you would probably need to make sure that it twirled a little bit too, like spinning once you had it made. <laughs> Astronomy is a wonderful topic for research. Heard I was teaching us about science um, this whole time. A specific element, which is the universe. 
Could it, could and for it us, science? astrophysicists, universe is our lab. Mm -hmm. And that's a wonderful lab, because that's a lab that has so much possibilities, way more than any lab you can imagine on Earth. For example, you can see through the time, depending like the on what you look at, you look back in time. You can look at objects which are just impossible to reproduce, like a black hole, which is an infinite point where everything is attracted. We can look at objects that are extremely hot, at a temperature you will never know think about it. You can look at energy event which is unique like a supernova again and again and again. The stellar so on birth. are looking at the what's called the extreme boundary of the physics, the coolest. The oh, that's just a three star. He's not that hyped about it. I understand. Biggest, the smallest, anything you can get into the universe. And that's wonderful. Mm hmm Possibly one of the biggest questions of the humankind is, is there any life outside the solar system? The Fox Girls. Fermi paradox was half a joke when Enrico Fermi said, well, if there is plenty of life in the universe, so why don't we see it? And actually oh, the I know question about is very that. profound in its, in its meaning. It implied that life has to develop and to be able to, um, to travel between stars and galaxies. Maybe we are not able to see it. So if there is no life traveling between galaxies, it means that maybe there is a possibility that when life develops the capability to do it, it just stops. Just looking at the thermonuclear weapon we have on Earth right now, we have not the capability to travel between stars, but are we going to survive until we are reaching that stage? And that is what is behind uh, really the Fermi bar. So what he's saying is, what he's saying is that we don't see the aliens and it's because they're dead and they're dead because there's a certain point of advancement that no one can pass because they die before they can get out of their of their planet like like, before anyone has a chance to evolve to the point that they could come say hello, there's some shit that, that, that always happens, always, it always happens, that kills everyone. And there's no way, it's fate. This is fate. This, it's either that, it's either that, or we're, we're alone. We're alone. It's only us. But didn't, but didn't Elon Musk say that he's gonna fix that problem? Like, did, didn't Elon say <laughs> that it's okay? Uh, he's gonna make sure that that we get out, and and he's gonna he's gonna run it, and it will be okay. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure it's gonna be fine. Yeah, I can't. God. Elon Musk. <laughs> Yes, surely Elon Musk will save us. <laughs> oh my god. Dogs. Oh my gosh. We've learned a lot so far. Life may be common in terms of being started on other stars, but the development of life leading to a species that would be able to lift off from its planet may be extremely rare. And think about our stories. Without these big asteroids falling on Earth, maybe this planet would be still populated by dinosaurs. And whether the dinosaur could have been evolving and go to the moon is not sure. Maybe it's very rare. Wait, 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 what? Wait, what the fuck? Wait, what about the dinosaurs went to the moon? Wait. Maybe this planet would be still... Sorry, I, sorry, I, I, I spaced out for a second because I was singing a song and then I heard him say about the dinosaurs on the moon and I'm sorry. of life leading to a species that would be able to lift off from its planet may be extremely rare. And think about our stories. Without these big asteroids, falling on earth yeah maybe 
this planet would be still populated by dinosaurs. Oh, that was an important part. And whether the dinosaur could have been evolving and go to the moon is not sure. Okay, I missed a really important part of it. <laughs> Um, but actually, maybe that's where they really went. You know, like some of them were really big and they could probably just jump over there to the moon or some could fly. Like maybe they just flew over there. So basically what we've learned is that the dinosaurs went to the moon. I mean, not all, but, but some of them. Maybe it's very rare. Maybe we are the only life entity with the awareness of the knowledge of the universe in this galaxy. No, I don't so think So it's that. also something to think about it and maybe to cherish our situation, our extreme situation, our responsibility on that matter. Well, I'm responsible about that So I think this family because, is into uh, I'm vegan, by the way. I just, it's been about five minutes since the last time I mentioned that. So I saw the ice caps and it reminded me to let everyone know that I'm vegan. So I'm actually doing my part to save the world. That's all. Interesting in terms of philosophical sense, because it asks the question of the meaning of our civilizations yes, and the you. destiny of our civilizations. Can I have my, uh, my statue of moral virtue of high moral civilizations? At the same time, you demonstrate how beautiful it's our destiny to Ooh. be able to ask the question already. So whether we will one day get the answer, I don't know. I tend to be optimistic and to, to be a believer to the kindness of humankind, but we still have to face serious challenging as a global entity because we have only one place to live. It's this planet, nowhere else. And we should really, as a global population, better learn how to oh, address really good it graphics. together to use it wisely if one day we want to have any hope of all species to travel to other stars. Wow! Well, look, I really appreciate them making this video. It's so nice. And uh, he's an astrophysicist who won the Nobel Prize for Physics in 2019. I'm, I really hope that they make more videos like that to encourage people to just think about that kind of stuff more. We're, ed we're getting educated and we're learning. This guy's probably a wealth man. <laughs> probably a... 